All right, chip of the day. Everybody loves chip of the day. Uh, this is a pretty rare chip, a Max 038. No longer made, and I don't know why. Um, I think it's pretty cool. So I think everybody's familiar with a really old chip. It's called an XR2206. And they were a, it's in this box here, but there's a, a 2206 in here. It was a function generator on a chip. It would generate sines and cosines, or, I mean, <laughs> sines and triangles and square waves. And you could, you can still buy little kits. I got this from China not too long ago. So I don't know if XR just has a big stick stockpile of parts somewhere, if they still make them, or there's a Japan, uh, Chinese clone. I, 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 I don't know. Anyway, you can still get, you can still get XR 2206s all day long, it seems. Um, but the limitations of these were, you know, they weren't all that great. They only went to a megahertz. Eh, they were, they were, they, they left something to be desired, right? What if somebody made a better chip, but it did exactly the same thing, but it was just a better chip. Da, 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 da. <laughs> That's what this is. It's basically just a fancy 2206. Um, this one goes to 20 megahertz. Um, and yeah, it outputs triangle, sawtooth, sine, square, pulses. It'll do sweeps. It'll do all kinds of stuff. It's super, super cool. Um, and like I said, they don't make it anymore. I, uh, now that I've just found out about it, <laughs> I can't get any. Um, so anyway, let's... Uh, Let's take a look at, uh, these are the graphs you sort of need to take a look at. Let's see here if I can get my camera down here, yeah. So this is the output frequency versus input current. Now the input current is set by a resistor. Um, and you can see that for one, a given capacitor, so these lines are single capacitors. So this is 100 nanofarad. So this 100 nanofarad line here will give you frequencies from about uh, 20 hertz to about 20, about, oh, maybe eight kilohertz. Um, so, so if you wanted to build a generator with this thing, you would have a knob on the front that would set frequency range and it would step through different um, capacitors. And then you would turn the resistor that would fine tune you on each, on each one here. Um, and you know, so you could, you could probably do the whole range in one, two, three. So three, three capacitors will give you this entire range from one Hertz to 10 megahertz, right? So yeah, pretty cool stuff. Um, let's see, what is there to know about it? Um, one thing that I found out, it's a, uh, a little bit power hungry, not bad. I think it's 40 milliamps, um, of input current. And the chip is plus or minus five volts. So that's a little bit weird too, plus or minus five, but that's okay. Uh, here is a block diagram. So there's a current generator and an oscillator. Uh, then it goes into a sine shaper. Uh, so there's a, it generates a triangle wave here that gets shaped into a sine wave. The triangle can go straight through or you can run that through a comparator and turn it into a square wave. And then the multiplexer chooses which one. And you program the multiplexer with two bits. So depending on the, the status of those two bits, it'll choose one of these. And I'll show you that. Output has pretty good drive current, something like 40 milliamps or something like that. Um, yeah. Uh, like I said, I like this chip. Yeah, here's the, uh, here's the programming, sine wave, square wave, triangle wave. I'll, show, I'll demonstrate that. Um, I like it. I like this chip. <laughs> so this is the schematic that I breadboarded up. Okay, the one in the data sheet here. I breadboarded this one up. It has a frequency. It's just a variable resistor from pin one to pin 10. Pin one is a voltage reference, so it's stable. And then that just sets a current into pin 10. Um, and then you set the uh, capacitor um, is C2. Yeah, C2 here. Um, so I'm going to, uh, I have a 120 picofarads uh, on C2 right now. That'll give us some higher frequencies. And everything else is mostly grounds and stuff, so not much else going on. We can look down over here. 
And uh, so, like I said, it's plus minus five volts. Um, and uh, I did I did use my IR camera to take a look at the uh, the heating of this thing. Like I said, it does get a little bit warm. You can put your finger on it. The general rule of thumb is if you can leave your finger on it and not go ow, <laughs> it's about 50 C. Anything over 50 C, you'll go ow. So that's calibration there. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's hook this thing up and uh, see what it looks like. So I've turned the power on. Uh, this is the minus five and this is the plus five. And uh, the minus is drawing 44 milliamps and the uh, positive is drawing 36 milliamps. And I don't, uh, I don't really have a load on this. It doesn't really change much even with a maximum load that the output can to take. Most of the power is, is consumed by the chip. All right, there we go. Let's see here. Let's measure the... Uh, so we're at 2.3... Uh, Megahertz, let me reach down and uh, change the frequency here. Uh, we can take it up to 3.6 megahertz and down to 1.89 megahertz. I just have a, I just grab something off the shelf to put a, a resistor in there to vary things. All right, so let's, um, let's go down here and uh, I will change the, uh, digital logic on that those two pins okay and if i told it to do a, a sine wave i mean a, a, a um, ramp uh triangle wave there you go i can't come up with words today uh, and if i change it again we get a square wave so there you go you can just program those two bits and you can get square wave uh let's see here what's going on Oops, I changed the wrong wire. I changed the wrong wire and now I've probably fried it. <laughs> oh no, I changed the wrong wire and I think I destroyed my chip. Oh no, oh shoot. What did I just do? I put plus five on pin two, which is ground. Oh gosh, <laughs> oh well. At least you got to see it before I destroyed it. Gosh, gosh darn it. Like I said, these are hard to find. These chips are hard to find. Darn, 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 darn. Let me, uh, let me, re let me cycle the power on it and see if it, see if it gets better. I don't think it will. I don't think it will. I think I fried something. Oh, darn it. <laughs> darn it, darn it, darn it. Oh, well, one of the, um, one of the problems with using these breadboards is, uh, yeah, uh, it's really easy to grab the wrong wire and count, count, count the wrong holes forward and backwards. And, uh, oh, well, uh, I destroyed it. I destroyed it. Oh, well, <laughs> live and learn. Like I say, don't be afraid to fail. Fail soon, fail often. <laughs> You'll learn if you fail. Um, and, uh, oh, that's this is what we're interested in. Uh, yeah, it was a cool chip. It was. Rest in peace. Uh, it will have to go to where all these things go. Um, the Max 038. It's a wonderful chip if you can find one. 